for having me today. I'm going to be talking about some of the research I've been doing around my PhD. So I'm doing a PhD at the Expressions, um, a practice-based PhD around songwriting and memory in place. Um, started off with a fascination around uh, Bon Iver and the cabin that he went to write his first album in. I'm wondering how that place kind of affected and was represented within the music that he'd been writing. Um, I discussed this with um, a colleague from America and he challenged me on the idea and said, well, is that really just a story? Is it just a marketing idea just to be able to sell the album? Or is place really part of the, the process? So I came up with this idea of the myth of place and whether actually how much is place really represented in music and how much is it, you know, in terms of the listener perception and also in the artist's intention, um, or is it all marketing? So I decided to look at some case studies and I focused on an, um, a collective called the Magnetic North, um, which features Erlen Cooper on the left there, Hannah Peel in the middle, and Simon Tong on the right, who've come together from different bands. Simon, is well known for the Verve and Gorillas, Hannah Peel is a solo artist, and Erlen was in Hair and the Carnival alongside Simon. Um, Erlen wanted to write a piece about his, his place of birth, which is the Orkney Islands of Scotland. He had this idea, so they went up to Orkney himself and Simon, and they, they brought in Hannah to write some string arrangements, and then she actually became a full part of the collective. Um, so it's the beautiful Orkney there, the always looks to that family. Um, so they came up with this idea, this album, Orkney Symphony of the Magnetic North, and then called the project also Magnetic North. <coughs> I'd like to show you a few clips from the film they made. Alpha Street in Scotland. And another clip I'd like to play, which is it right here. Uh, a tiny sheltered harbour village, um, surrounded by the sea. Traditionally, you get in by boat, and that boat always um, toots its horn. It's such a low noise, and it just echoes around the town. Hannah just started playing these long, drawn-out trombone notes. It's just like, okay, let's just layer up some trombones. And literally, we all sat in the dark, sign a plus two chords, and then I just played a couple of notes, and it sounded like ship's horn. And I'm like, that's drum nest, that's drum nest. 
And it was just very natural. Like it was improvised. The melody was just one take. And that was, that was the track. It seems just to help the play with very good music. So clearly they're trying to represent the, the sound of the town and Ian's memories of the town, trying to get those into the actual recordings and the music composition, but they're doing it through kind of improv. So they're, they're in the place, they're experimenting with sound, trying to see, get to a point where they feel like, yes, this is starting to be like strongness. So I interviewed Hannah uh, a year ago, and I interviewed her about several projects that she's working on, because a lot of her work was sitting there in place. And I asked her specifically about this album, and how they, try, how they tried to incorporate the sounds of the place into the album. It just happened naturally. I think when, when, it, when we recorded it all inside the fabric, the it's funny, we've all learned stuff as each record's gone on, we've all developed in certain ways, and that first record was so naive as well, and you know, we yeah. all might have been but it also gave it the sound, it gave it this naivety that is quite jerky at times and it's quite bitty and you can see on keyboard. It really felt like the sound kind of emulated the child's kind of very nice. Yeah. Because your memory is never going to be exact, it's always just fragments of color or color. Yeah. So clearly they had ideas about memory and about uh, capturing the sound of the place, but it could be argued that actually they picked quite an easy subject. They're a coastal town is full of imagery, full of poetic imagery of the seaside and the boats coming in and the memories of all the places. You had a central character, which was this Betty Corrible, who was this young girl who committed suicide. And appeared to him as a ghost in a dream, told him to make the album. So there's a narrative there. So the, the, the kind of, there was a strong narrative in the album, it was quite easy to follow. So you could argue that was quite an easy thing to do. But then the second album looked at Skellum's Fail, or Skem, as we called it, which was a much more difficult prospect. So how do you how do you actually write an album about Skellum's Fail, which doesn't have those traditional kind of um, sort of Senses of imagery that you might expect. So, my Skelm Tale was where, was where I was born, where I grew up for 18 years, but it's also where Simon Tong grew up, and uh, one member of Manchester North, which is why they chose Skelm Tale. Now, the other two, Hannah and Evan, said to Simon, Why don't we do Skelm? And he said, Absolutely no way, because he didn't have any good memories of Skelm, he didn't want to do it. So, they. And you might see why. So, I'm going to skip that for a second. This is um, Simon being interviewed, and he said it's quite a personal thing to agree to make something about where you come from. I didn't really want to do it, it was a bit too close to home. So I didn't really want to do it. Actually, when I spoke to Hannah, what she said was that he really, really, really didn't want to do it. And what they, they did was they, her and Erwin went up to Skem, they made a little film of the place, they wrote a piece of music, they sent to Simon and said, Surprise, we're doing Skem. And he said, absolutely no way, and then didn't talk to him for three months after that. He was the same that we were doing. And he said, I want to write an album about the seasons, which they weren't so keen on that idea. So they went up to the Lake District, and they spent a week up there in a retreat, um, writing this music about the seasons. Um, and they got to the end of the week, and then they listened back to what they'd written, and Sam said, it's about scam, isn't it? And they said, yes, it is Sam. So, there we go. They then said, right, we're doing the album once again. And so they finished it off. And that's it. I'm going to go back to this slide now. So what I'm doing is laying a lot of the theories of ontology over this because Skem for me is kind of a perfect example of ontology because it's all about all these things that were promised. New towns are about the promise of this, of what's going to be you know, a wonderful life and what's to come. And of course, a lot of it doesn't happen for the people that live there. Um, and it's epitomised by the, these kind of pathways. So when you, if anything, you've been to Skem, when I was growing up there, 
you get these paths. You go into a field, and in the middle of the field, you find a path that looks like that, which would go under a subway, which didn't have a road or anything above it, just another field. And once you got to the subway, it was another field. So there's nothing, there's nothing, it didn't go in, it didn't start anywhere, it didn't go anywhere. And it was literally, you know, that's the start of the estate, and then they, they ran out of money and stopped. So you literally had these lost futures, you know, in the architecture. Um, and as kids, obviously, we would just go around the screen. So that's what you did. So yeah, this is how the band tried to find a narrative from the first around the scale of points. In 1515, Sir Thomas More in his Utopia described 54 new towns, which would have been a planet's paradise had they come to be. So what they did was they went to archival footage of when Scan was being developed, when it was built, and used that as kind of their narrative. Um, but they also went back to Skem and they interviewed people from Skem interviewed artists and people in the community to try and get a feel for what it was all about and how they could not write an album that was Simon's bad memories of what it was like, but actually an album of hope and sort of recognising the people that live there, how hopeful they are and how they're actually embracing their community. Inspiration from Skem um, it's odd. I don't know how it looks to outsiders. How, how could this place be inspirational? But I think uh, for all its problems, people don't say in a, in a shameful, underhand voice, oh, I come from Scan. So they're delighted. You meet another Scan, you're so proud. Yeah, you're from Scan. It's quite exciting, then. The story starts. So, what's to take so it's quite a challenge um, to make an album like that with such difficult subject matter. Um, and I'm interested in the legacy of what that's left. So we've got those artists that were kind of um, talked to as part of the process and how they come together and how they're building their own legacy, their kind of art-based legacy, their heritage. Um, so all the stuff that as kids we ran around sort of jumping all over and not recognising for what it was, people are now saying, look, there's some actual, some beautiful parts of this town and we need to, to, to kind of recognise them and protect them. And I think a great example of this is up in Burnley, where is the, there we go. So one of the, the walls here, which was actually filmed in one of the videos, the kind of reclaim this wall, this, you know, this art installation, just the, the four of these community installations around the town, and, and the kind of regenerating them for the, for the current community to so recognise what they have and so there's lots of, sort of great things about that we can have done. Okay, I skipped a few things, but I think we're good. Lovely, thanks very much.